This screencast is for teachers to look at how you use the submachine tomography tool. So there are many tools uh, within the submachine site. We are going to use the one that says tomography cross sections, which is going to give us vertical slices into the mantle um, from a defined line on the Earth's surface. So We are going to use the detox P2 model. There are many models for both P waves and S waves. They will give slightly different results. The reason to use P2 is number one, it's the default. And number two, we want all our results to be comparable to one another. So when you are looking at the model, you will have a line on the map that's defined by user input. This line on the surface corresponds to the top of the cross section here. The colors of the dots match the ones on the map. And then these dashed lines represent specific depths within the mantle. The top one is 410 kilometers deep. The next one is 660 kilometers deep. And this one is 1000 kilometers below Earth's surface. And then the bottom curve of the cross section represents the very bottom of the mantle at the core mantle boundary. So this cross section shows the entirety of the mantle from the crust down to the core. The colors represent different seismic velocity anomalies. And that means that we're looking at whether seismic waves traveling through Earth's interior would be going faster or slower than expected values um, for a specific depth within the mantle. So these red colors, for example, don't mean absolutely slow. They mean slower than expected. In places where you have this neutral uh, zero velocity anomaly color, we would still expect the velocity to change as we go deeper into the mantle based on the change in density and rigidity of the mantle material. So a red or highly negative velocity anomaly indicates that that part of the mantle material is less dense, a higher temperature, and then we can infer from that that it will be moving upwards uh, in that location where the seismic waves would be traveling slower than expected. When students are finding locations on Earth's surface um, to generate these cross sections, they're going to use the coordinate based plotting option. We are going to be keeping latitude constant just for uh, ease of understanding the spatial orientation of these cross sections. So for example, This is gonna help us plot a line at a constant latitude of 20 degrees north. And then our longitude coordinates should always be different from one another. Negative coordinates will be in the Western hemisphere and positive longitude coordinates will be in the Eastern hemisphere. So depending where this horizontal line is plotted, you will get a different width of the cross section. And that's just because a span of a constant longitude in degrees will take up a different distance on the Earth, depending how close it is to the pole versus the equator. If students want to save their generated cross sections, they can click this link. That will create a JPEG of the cross section for them, which they can then enlarge to examine in closer detail and leave open when they go back to the tool to input a new location.